Hallelujah. He said to your Lord, self, my life is not messed up. Say, my life is not messed up. Say, my life is made up. Say, my life is made up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm so excited tonight because we are in a season of God's power. God is beginning to use ordinary entities as a conduit, as a vehicle to project his power and display his glory. And it is God's will that you are one of such that God is raising up at critical times like these to demonstrate his power. Pastor Angelo already said that the kingdom of God is not in words but in demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. I was in a meeting yesterday at outreach yesterday and I saw how God's power can be very, very, you know, uh, impactful in the lives of men. When the scripture says that the earnest expectation await the manifestations of sons of God, it is so true because there are many that are under the encumbrance of the devil and they are under the yoke of satanic and demonic affliction. I was in a village yesterday to the minister and just one other call of people that are sick, almost half of the village came out. And I was so moved with compassion and I trusted God to administer his power to bring about their healing. What was notable to me was a young girl that was brought out. They said they were just traveling and suddenly he had an accident and she, she went blind from that place. They brought her forward, I was moved, I was, I was compassionate by the Spirit. And I prayed in order that God make this girl to see. Initially, I laid my hands on her eyes. You know, she was seeing men as trees. I said, what is this? He says, five. I said, no, this is not the kind of recovery that God can do. So I said, push her aside because there were so many. They were numbered almost 80 people that came out to be touched by the power of God. And you can see that Satan has, you know, a fashioned affliction for certain demography of people or geographical location. More than out of 80 people that came out, more than 60 of them had ankle problem. It was, what is your case? Ankle problem. What is your case? Ankle problem. And I said, this Satan is very wicked. And to the glory of God, as much as God's power touched, were excited and they were running all over the place. And to the glory of God, this young girl that was said had an accident that could not see, began to see after a while. They brought her to the stage. I said, leave her, let her walk back to where she can find the seat. And she walked from a distance without eating her leg against a stone and sat down to the glory of God. God will begin to raise men in this place that will become conduit of power through which God will begin to manifest his glory among men and among nations. And we are one of such candidates in the name of Jesus. The world is thirsty to see the power of God liberate them from the yoke of the devil and from the yoke of evil. And if we cannot position ourselves and come to a certain measure of understanding of what God has already given to us and begin to walk in this attitude of understanding of what God has already made us and given to us we may not really exert the level of power that God desire or to see us manifest in his name the topic before me this evening is so critical and it's centered around the issue of authority and power. Understanding what is ours already in Christ and having the audacity to walk in his reality. What I mean by having the audacity is knowing who you have become and what you have received and being confident to walk in the understanding and exact dominance by the reason of what you have been given by God on the merit of Christ Jesus. Tonight, I'm speaking on authority. 
the identity and validity of sons and daughters. I'm going to begin from John chapter 1 from verse 12. So yea, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become sons of God. Sons born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. He said to them who receive him, to them who had believed in his name, he is not going to give them something, but rather he gave them something. He said the right to function as a son of God. Some versions of scripture says he gave them power to become sons of God. Some version says he gave them authority. And as I was, you know, standing in the presence of God, contemplating what authority means, and he says to me, authority is a license to use power. Authority is an approver to use power. Yes, there are powers. And yet men use his power. But there is a right that makes the usage of power legitimate and forceful. He says, you don't just have power as my son. You don't just have power as my child. You have the rights of heaven to use that power. That is something huge. A pre-approver. A pre-approver to use power. You are not just going to see a, see a sick person and say, God, can this lame work? Is there power to eat the sick? The Bible says that God has already pre-approved your engagement. That's authority. He said he has already pre-approved you to use power. That is, there is a deposit of power with God. The all power in heaven and on earth belongs to who? Belongs to God. No man has power of himself by himself, not even the devil. But the Bible says something happens to you when you believe him and when you receive him. That act alone provision you and give you access to a treasure that is called power. Authority and power are not the same. Power is a force to make things happen. Power is what? A force that makes things happen. A volcanic force, an eruptive force, a dynamic force. You can describe the force with different adjectives and variables. But the anchor is that power, a force is available to trigger a reaction. That is power. And in the context of man, there are different kinds of power. Aerodynamic power, electric power, be mention it. But for this operation of power to be legitimate and uncontestable and unchallenged, we need the right to use it in this world. And the scripture says that God has some people that he license to use that power. Excuse me, if you carry a gun as you are as a civilian and you shoot it at an object, will the gun work or not? But after you ended up shooting the gun and they discovered that you have a gun in your custody what are they going to come to do to you they are going to arrest you why because you don't have the license to own or to operate a gun at the end of time many will be judged for one thing for power they were not authorized to use but all we will be commended for one thing for having an understanding of our rights to use power and for using power. Power is available to us as sons and daughters of God and we are licensed by God to operate this power. And that's why I said in my name, you shall 
something that happens to us at times that happened to me until I snap out of that is that you don't need God's approval again to walk in power as a child of God. He has pre-approved you for whatever you can do. Because he said, in my name, they shall. They shall. Not that they will ask. I remember one time like that about five years ago. My wife is here as a witness. I was going for an evangelism and I saw a madman very close to this place on this street. Sitting by the roadside, God said, go and eat that man. I said, hmm? Come again, sir. He said, pray for this man. Okay, I went to the madman trying to... So a woman noticed me. He said, what are you trying to do? I said, God said, I should pray for this man. Said, this man has been like this for 10 years. So the woman happened to be the mother of this man. And apparently, the man, the madman, used to walk away. They would not see him for six months, one year, two years. But eventually... The last time he walked away and they caught him. They took him to some people and they used power to tie him. That said they tied him down there. Is that because your bad believes that somebody's child that is dead is better than somebody's child that is missing? So what they did was that they tied this young man down to a stake. So he was dumb, he was deaf, and demobilized. And God said, Minister to this man. So when he told me the story and I was told that it has lingered for 10 years, my faith failed me. I told them, I said, let me go for three days. I'll come back the third day. You know what? I wanted to go back and say, God, was the, ambition, the voice of ambition I had or the voice of the Spirit? It was a Friday evening. I got home that night and God spoke to me. He said, I told you to exert my power. You are coming for revalidation. Say, as much as it's concerned the operation of power in this kingdom, you have been pre approved to use it. How many of us will see a policeman that will see an arm robber that will be calling station whether he will shoot, he shoot or not? That is the orientation that most of us don't have. And I saw this young man the second day. I didn't wait for the third day, I went there again. They said, I told the woman, I said, I've come to do what I said I would do. We said, should we bring him outside? My faith failed again. Then we should go and do it inside. In case. Eventually, the woman took me to a sitting room and brought the father and the, and, and the boy. Sincerely speaking, as I began to mention the name of Jesus, this man began to say, Amen. The first thing that happened was that his dumbness and deafness disappeared. The mental issue that he had fled from the window. That was what started this ministry on a major plane five years ago. There is power that you have been licensed to use. And to the glory of God, we brought the boy. The boy is resumed where he was working. And all kinds of things follow subsequently. The younger sister used to come for this meeting. You have been licensed to exact power. You have been licensed to use power. Let me show you a scripture in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. You must have this orientation. And like Pastor um, Angelo said, her body does that. It's only this kind of orientation that can make a man to be going about looking for a dead man to, to raise up. He had, there is an audacity that you will have when this understanding gains ground in your mind. What I mean by audacity, confidence to become audacious to attempt and to venture into some cause in a very reckless mode knowing that you have been licensed to use God's power. According to his will. Excuse me. Some men that did not even have this license to use power had understanding that power can be used. They are called the seven sons of Skepha. You know what they did? They saw a madman. They said, In the name of Jesus, whom what? Paul preached. They knew that some men were licensed to operate in a dimension of power, authorized by God. So they too, they want to run on a borrowed license.
They wanted to run on a fake identity. And they said, I have an ID card. But when they brought out the ID card and showed it to the demonic, uh, demoniac, the man said, I know Paul. I know Jesus. But I checked the record of men that are licensed to use power. Your name is not there. He said, who are you? One thing that amazed me was that the demon actually responded to the trigger of power. That is, when they mentioned in Jesus' name, something shook the demons. And I always tell people that, you know that this demon actually came out. Just that they didn't go, come out to go to arid places. They came out to do a beating. They came out. Because if they did not come out, how can one man beat up seven people? At the same time. I don't understand what I'm saying. A man is limited to handle seven men. But the Bible says that this demonia came out. The demons went in different direction and surrounded the seven men. They beat them to stupor. Why? Because they were not licensed to operate the power they were trying to invoke. Let me show you a scripture. And I will link it up to that verse of scripture. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Who is there? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Is that where you're reading? He said, Behold, yes. Are you reading it? He said, Behold, I have given you the authority to trample on serpent and scorpions. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Verse 20. Yes. Yes. There's something I want to point your attention to in this scripture. I'm going somewhere and I'm going to give us wisdom to operate and to walk in the authority that has been given to us. But before then, I need to, to have your understanding rooted in what you have been given. The Bible says that Jesus told this man that he first called as first witnesses of his power and of his grace upon men. And the Bible says, he said to them, Behold, I have given you authority. Authority. Your authority and its boundaries is limitless. That I have given you authority to trample upon serpents, to trample upon scorpions, and to overcome to mention of how to trample upon scorpions. I have given you influence and dominion over all the powers of the devil. Excuse me. Is there anything exclusive as listed here? Is there no power or entity of power on earth that you have not been authorized to subdue? When you understand this, you can walk with your shoulder eye, not in pride, but in confidence. You can invade terrain and territories knowing that they don't have the legitimacy to challenge your invasion. You can go to landscape and go and exert kingdom influences in those territories as a child of God. He said, I have given you authority. Go and use my power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Go and use my power to subdue all the powers of the enemy. Say power, past power. Look at what he says here. He said, I've given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power. Say, I have the authority to overcome all the powers of the enemy. That is the devil. You have the license. You can operate it with confidence. 
and you have the backing of God's government behind your operations and engagement. Common situation. You are running from pillar to post when you have authority to trample upon it. Are you understand what I'm saying? Common challenge. Headache. It's not even scorpion yet. How much more if the scorpion show up? Malaria. It's not even the snake yet. How, how, what happens if you wake up at night and see a cobra like this physically and say, I'm sent by the devil to you? As you watch a movie, what happens if in the night somebody just comes out from the wall with your colloquial eyes and turn to a beast and say, Ooh, I am here to devour? It's only cockroach you have seen that is flying in a direction you don't understand. You are shouting blood of Jesus. Though it's in a film, but I watched a comedy skit that one guy just came out from the wall and built powder on the face of this young man that was trying to go out. And the guy just rubbed the powder very well on his face. And the devil asked, you are not afraid, I did not even have powder before. You just gave me what? All expense paid powder to look good and better. When Satan understands that you know your onions and that you know the place of your authority and what you have been authorized to do, he will flee from you. Satan only intimidates those that don't have the right orientation of who they are. When you don't know and if you don't know who you are, Satan will make a mess of your mind. And in order for Satan to really overpower you, you first of all come to punch on your confidence about your identity and about your property. He will come with intimidating voices. Are you really a son of God? Do you really have authority? Can you really use power? Say to yourself, I've been licensed to use power. Say, I have authority to use power because it has been given to me by God. And in verse 20, the disciples of Jesus actually went and exerted and used this authority given to them by Christ. And they said, Satan obeyed us. Demons flee at our command. And sick persons got healed by our instructions. Jesus told them. He said that was good. But don't rejoice because of that. He said rejoice that your name is what? Written. He said rejoice that you are truly licensed to use power. You are not getting that. He said don't rejoice in what you saw. Rather rejoice that you have a permanent, you can have it as a permanent and recurrent experience. Because you are actually accredited to operate that way. Say rejoice in the reality of your accreditation. Say what you excite you is not what you saw. What you excite you is what you have become and what you have got received. Say rejoice for your name is written. When I say you have license, if I say show me your license, what will you show me? First, ask you where is your license? What will you show me? You bring out a paper where there is a signature on it. And there it would be to whom it may concern. Angelo. What is that your name? Egg beg beg beg. Is it egg beg beg? I shall know that it's each habit. I shall know that the name is clumsy somehow. Angelo Eshurame has been authorized as a lieutenant corner. Excuse me, when you bring out your license and there's one small local government officer that is asking for it, what will the person do? Yes, sir. I was traveling with the corner the other day and they stopped us because it was on Mufti. He said, identify yourself. All he needed to do was to bring out his ID card. The soldier that was trying to collect it is undid like this. He had a shot, sir. Everybody there, shot, sir. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Wow. 
He didn't even carry go. He just identified yourself, he just smile. Hey, John, whoa, whoa, whoa. All of them from where we were to the end. People that did not even cite the ID card were shouting, Sean, sir, excuse me, if you know who you are, that demon sent from your father's village comes knocking your door and you roar and you stand up. All he will do is, Sean, sir, I did not know that I'm transgressing my boundary. You don't understand what I'm saying. It's not you that will say, demon, ah, every enemy from my father's house. You don't even need to address some certain things. That's why the Bible says that the righteous shall be as bold. Excuse me. When an hyena comes around the lion, will he be doing anything? Have you watched documentary before? All the lion knows need to do is to do like this. And the hyena will be doing. Say rejoice. Because your name is among those that have been licensed. And when you have this understanding, all you will seek is wisdom to operate and to walk in authority. I'm going to give you about seven wisdom in about 20 minutes now. Wisdom to walk and to make your authority effective. Wisdom. Number one key to effective operation of your authority is what I call consecration. Consecration is what a man go into to refine and to keep in a very sharp state his authority. A man of authority must be a man of consecration. You cannot be in a position of authority and be reckless in your living and disposition to life. Lack of consecration weakens your ability to exercise authority. Consecration simply means you live a life that is consistent and commensurate to your status as one authorized to use God's power. Excuse me. The more access you have to power, the more consecrated you should become. And what is consecration? Consecration being, means that being extra careful and paying attention to the details of your actions and behavior because of who you are. You don't understand what I'm saying. Being careful and paying attention to the details of your action and behavior. Not because you want to become something, but because of what? Who you are. A lady that is dressed, dressed for a beauty pageant, robe in white, will not sit anyhow or walk anyhow. Her step, step will be consecrated steps. Excuse me. Have you seen them on the wrong way before? Is that how they, are, is that how they, 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 they trek? How do they trek? How do they walk? Why are they cat walking? Because they are dressed for a function. They are robed for a purpose. Consecration means align your life with a lifestyle that is consistent in what you have been decked and dressed for. A man that had authority to use power but that failed for want of consecration is a man I call Judah in the Bible. One of the sons of Jacob. The Bible says that the Bible, God has already has said the scepter shall not depart from what? From Judah. You know what scepter is? A representation of his authority. A scepter is what a king has that when he wants to approve something, that's what he uses to approve. But Judah was such that even prophecy of authority was hanging on his neck. But he was not a man of consecration. The Bible says that one day he visited his friend in a town and he thought to himself, let me do a short time somewhere. He carried his authority and saw a prostitute, though a disguised prostitute, and went into her and had fun all night. 
a man of authority will not live that reckless in, in compromising his authority. And when he went to sleep with this prostitute, after they finished, he wanted to start going, thinking nothing has happened. The prostitute said, you can't go now, you have not paid me. He said, I don't have money to pay you. He said, you have to pay me. He said, give me your staff with his court. He said, don't worry, I will send your payment. He said, no, what is the proof that you will send your payment? He said, give me your staff and your court. <laughs> staff is authority and the court and the power to operate it. That singular act of recklessness, empty duda of his ability to exert power. And the Bible says, he gave the prostitute because he did not have the proper understanding of what he has, he even forgot it to the prostitute. Only the prostitute got pregnant and gave birth. He did not know what he had until after nine months. And when the prostitute gave birth, they reported that your daughter in law, Tema, has given birth to a strange man that he, the girl, he couldn't say. He said, Bring him, bring her, let us kill her. But she, because she has done something blasphemous. It was her daughter-in-law that disguised as a prostitute. And they brought the daughter. Your father-in-law says you must be stoned to death. And the daughter-in-law says, if he was the one that gave that instruction, show him who owns his staff and his cord. If after he saw the staff and his cord, he can still have the audacity to say I should be stoned to death, then I'm ready to be stoned to death. If you are not consecrated, you show up to use power. Satan will say, where are you? You that have uh, multi joy already. I've already sifted you as with. And they brought the staff and the court to Judah. He said, can you identify this license? It's like the owner got it misplaced. Consecration, lack of consecration will cause you to misplace your license. I don't know if you have been driving before and you have misplaced your license. And they say, show us the driving license. And you say, I have. Where is it? I have lost it. They brought the license to Judah. Judah said, okay. If the person that sent me the license is the one who wants to stone to death, I better leave her. It is me that you are supposed to stone for lack of consecration. A man that is not consecrated, no license to use power, will be defied. Many of us, we speak in tongues when trouble kakabo shalida haza. And demon is saying that, please, when you, are, when you finish, tell me so that I can do what I want to do in your life. Because you that is speaking in tongues are just been kissed and been smooched. You just got smooched some minutes ago. And you are saying, kako sada. It's a bit shut up. A noise. It's not a consecrated tongue. You have just finished lying. I chunched somebody and said, You demon of blindness, come out. <laughs> he said, You? Don't be me and you just cooperate just now. Have you ever seen a policeman that collected bribe from somebody and want to arrest the same person at the same time? What would the person I guess stop this play if not play? Lack of consecration defies you and makes you impotent of your authority. So, number key wisdom that you must use to make yourself relevant and effective in the operation of, of power by the authority you have received is consecration. You can't just live anyhow. My wife is here. Most times when we are driving and we are supposed to pass one way, and I say, no, I would prefer to go and turn. He often asked me, why didn't you pass this way? I said, because you cannot punish any disobedient until your own obedience is complete. That officer came to Jesus. He said, Jesus, come and pray for my daughter that is sick. And Jesus said, I'm coming. Wait, let me finish what I'm doing. You know what the guy said? He said, I'm a man under authority. I said to this, go, and he goes. I said to this, come, that he come. I believe that once you speak, my daughter will be healed. A man that understands authority will not live a life that is reckless against the authority. I always say to a child of God that believes or that wants to hear, 
that you are not living a holy life because you want to please God. No. Or because you want to satisfy God. No. You are living holy because you are maintaining your status because you have been made holy by God. So the quest for holiness for us as Christians is not becoming a son of God by the way we live. It's maintaining our status as sons of God because of that is who we are. So I don't fornicate because I want to become a son of God. No, I don't fornicate because a child of God don't fornicate. It's not consistent. It is debasing my status. I don't do immoral things. Not because God will be angry with me. No. I don't engage in immorality because it is demeaning to my status, to my identity. It embarrasses who I am. Imagine a young girl in this meeting, for example, I say, come, let me sleep with you. I cannot do it because it is already even degrading. It's degrading to my status. How can you go to a goat say let's have sex the bible causes the best thinking reprobate mindset and that is what you are you cannot debase yourself and become animalistic because you have authority it is wisdom to work and to function in power the bible says that there is no way your authority will not be sharp and smooth there is no way at your appearing that Satan will not flee. There is no way when you are engaging the kingdom of darkness that will find something against you. The Bible says that the prince of this world comes to Jesus. But he found what? Nothing in him. Number two key. I have nine minutes. If you must walk in power and validate your identity, that you must be accountable accountability to constituted authority accountability Romans chapter 13 verse 1 it says let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established and the authority that exists have been established by God if you must be a man of authority you must be a man that respect authority as well Especially as young people, as youth. You cannot be saying you want to be trampling upon serpents and scorpions and you are disobedient to your parents. You don't respect your parents, which is the number one authority that God has set over you. Most of us even listen to our pastors more than our parents, especially our godly parents. I've said it times with that number here that when your parent is in Christ, their authority is supreme. To the authority of your pastor. I don't understand what I'm saying. You cannot be obeying your pastor and be disobeying your parents. You cannot be dishonoring your parents and you are rolling on the altar here. Say, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long. Say, this is the only commandment with a promise. Forget what your parents are doing that is pushing you into dishonor. It's a temptation. Don't take it. If your parents are living a life that you are not pleased with and you are thinking by that you can be trampled upon their head and counting them as a non-entity, it is devil that is using them to tempt you so that I can weaken your authority. So do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man what? So, so he shall what? Reap. What I'm saying is that if there is a pattern in your family that you don't like, it is by your own oppressions that that pattern will end. I'm not saying that when your parent tells you to do things that negate the counsel of God, you decide, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is good, Abby. Is that not what the scripture says? Most of the time, our parents are not outwardly evil. And even it is by our own conduct and respect we are called to them, that even brings them to a state where they can review their action towards us. If you are good and they are beginning to see you, that since you claim you profess Christ, something has changed about you. I'm sure by that change they observe in you, something will change about them. You must be accountable. 
you must be responsible to authorities. Parental authority, constituted authority, including governmental authorities. If you must be effective in using the authority that you have received in Christ, you must respect and not despise authorities. Number three, know your jurisdiction and scope of authority. Every authority has a scope. If you will be effective as a son of God in walking the reality of the authority you have in Christ, know the boundaries of your authority. Excuse me. One thing that most Christians do that has weakened their influence and their authority is how they even relate with the devil. Most of us don't know how to relate with the devil. And let me teach you something here. Devil is a constituted authority. God told us to resist him, not to abuse him. But most of us, we don't know the difference between resisting the devil and abusing the devil. Majority of us have said something like this. This devil, you are a bastard. Excuse me. You are walking contrary to your own authority. You don't abuse celestial beings, either falling or standing. You don't speak against dignitaries. I'm not saying that you live in fear of the devil. But all this devil, your ass scatter. Devil, Riyaji Daru. Devil, this and this. All those insulting, really, accusations. That will bring against him only comes back to injure us. Let me show you something in the book of Jude. And this, if I stop here tonight, this will make your authority much more effective. Because most times Satan wants to provoke you so that you can abuse him and so that he can hold something against you. Look at what Jude said. You need to really pay attention to this. Because I've seen many believers make this mistake. Hallelujah. Verse 9, right? He said in the same way from verse 8, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own body. They heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand. And the very things they do not understand by instinct have destroyed them. Like irrational animals will destroy them. And Peter also quoted and referenced this. There yeah, even Michael. I think we should read the version in Peter. I think Peter's own was more graphic. Uh, where is that in Peter now? Um... I think it is um, Second Peter. Coming quickly. Second Peter chapter two. Let me read from verse eleven. Let me read from verse ten. And especially those who indulge in the laws of a defiling passion and despise authority, bold and willful. They do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. We are as angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creation of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheme about matters which they are ignorant and will also be destroyed in their destruction. Excuse me. Don't join the bandwagon of those that think 
They can eat a piece of celestial beans and get away with it. If you are at any point in context with the devil concerning certain issues, simple in the name of Jesus, get away from here. I resist you. I subdue you. I cast you away. It's enough to exert your authority. Don't begin to say, Satan! Oloshi! Abi? He said, even angels don't do it. He said, when Michael was contending with the devil, he said, you rebellious one, you bastard. I have seen pastors say, Satan, you are a bastard. Have you not heard it before? It sounds good. It makes you feel big. Eh? It makes you big and pompous. But the Bible says, according to Peter, he's defiling you. He's defiling you. Just say in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebukes you. I cast you out of this place. Get out of this place. That is enough way of using authority. That is why human rights are even against the police. They are arresting criminals. They say everybody is innocent until proven wrong. That when you arrest an armed robber, you don't have the right to beat them. Abby, just arrest them and let the judge judge them. They call it extrajudicial killing or harassment. That is the bond of the authority. A policeman can get into trouble who arrests an armed robber and got him killed before he gets to the judge. The police also will be tried for what? Murder. And that is what it is in the spirit. If your authority will be valid and potent, you must know how to also interact with dignities, with authorities. And many people will ride on, you know, uh, the goose pimples that we are the one that will judge angels. Yes, you will judge angels, not that you have judged angels. You are not understand what I'm saying. Even when Jesus came and he saw the devil and demons loaded in one man. The demon said, don't destroy because of our time. Is that not what they said? They knew their rights. As much as they are woman rights, they are also spirit rights. He said, have you come to destroy us because of our time? Are you passing your boundary? That was they are asking him. Oh, devil, fire burn you. Fire burn you and scatter you. Have you come to judge us because of our time? If Jesus has tried to use fire to burn those people, those demons, his authority will have been not been effective. But Jesus said, No, your time has not come. But all I have is that you are also a legger in this person. So get out. They said, Please, we know we are a legger. But let us go into these animals. I tell you, get out. That's all you need to do not fight. And what we call deliverance today, I call it frustration. Deliverance is the easiest thing to do for a man that has authority. I've done deliverance from certain federal people. We don't fight in deliverance. I've seen deliverance where the delivery and the deliverer went into fiscal boxing. Deliverance is easy. What is deliverance? You are an illegal occupant in this vessel. In the name of Jesus that have licensed me, come out of him. It's as simple. What did you do with this night? Who sent you? Your father's village. How long have you been staying there? I have come to destroy you. Speak, speak. Mm, I am a Lumba Kokumba. Tell me, tell me. He said his father, his, his great grandfather gave us we are here. I am a husband from the realm of the marine kingdom. I will not let him go. Next time you see that, say African magic. In my name you shall cast out devils. See? When you have authority and when you have power, 
and that is what you are but for you to be effective in all of these things you must know your jurisdiction a custom officer will not do the work of a policeman a policeman will not do the work of what a custom there are jurisdictions and there are boundaries you must learn from scriptures your own jurisdiction and your boundaries because you have meant you have been designed to exact power and when you function within the confines of your jurisdiction you can't but be effective is somebody learning something tonight and lastly in one minute faithfulness increases authority and power authority increases by the proportion of faithfulness and commitment he that is faithful in little shall be given much authority is taken away from the unfaithful and influence is taken away from the uncommitted and given to who already has consider in Matthew chapter 25 verse 28 to 29 Faithfulness increases your authority. The Bible says that it is required, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It is required of a steward to be what for and what? Faithful. And when we speak about the word faithfulness, we speak about commitment. We speak about reliability. We speak about dependability. We speak about integrity. And we speak about consistency. That it is required that one that has been entrusted to be reliable, to be trustworthy, to be trustworthy, to be truthful, to be consistent, and to be committed. When you walk in all of these parameters and operate in this dimension of wisdom, there's no way your authority will not be potent. There's no way you will be weak in the usage of authority. I say, brothers and sisters, we are licensed to use power because we are Christ ambassadors. Ambassadors are authorized representatives of their kingdom and their word is law in the nation they are sent to represent their country. If an ambassador speak concerning his country, the country that he is to represent his country takes his word as what? As power. An ambassador of Nigeria to the United States will say, we are no longer doing this. It will be on news that Nigerian said, not Mr. Henry said. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You are an ambassador of Nigeria to the United States and you say, henceforth, my country says we are no longer importing petroleum from U.S. In the news, is it Mr. Henry that will be there? He said Nigeria has declared that he's cutting his bilateral relationship with the U.S. in the petroleum and gas sector. The ambassador of Nigeria to the United States said that is what will happen. And it ends there. We are God's ambassadors. When you understand this, you will know that your word is power. You will know that you have been authorized. And that's why you are careful. That's why, that's why ambassadors don't live anyhow. Have you seen ambassadors that are smoking before? There was a man of God that was asked, why don't you wear crazy jeans and put earrings and do what that uh, dread? He said, have you ever seen? He said, well, they asked him, is he a sin? <laughs> he laughed. He said, have you ever seen a president on dreadlocks before? He said, have you ever seen royalty on dreadlocks before? He said, no, it's not possible because they are royalty. He said, yes. When you know who you are, there are some lifestyle you will not live. Because it's not consistent, it does not align with what you are. And they once said, a man of God was sitting in the business cabin of a plane. And actually, if you are doing an international flight, they serve aqua and wine. And in the morning, because it's about a nine hours flight, the waitress brought aqua to the man. He said, no, I don't take aqua. He said the lady looked at her one kind and went. So in the afternoon, she brought the same thing. 
I don't take alcohol. So as about they are ending the flight, she brought alcohol again. So as I said, I've told you this is the third time. Say, when do you take alcohol? Are you the only one? Everybody takes alcohol. Is here a sin? I'm a Christian too. Is here a sin to drink alcohol? Say, well, it's not a sin. Please. Can you bring the alcohol? He brought it, put it in a glass. Say, go and give the pilot to drink. Say, the pilot cannot drink because he's is on mission. All of us will crash. He said, likewise, I cannot drink because I'm what? I'm on mission. Paul said it this way. All things are lawful for me. But not all things are expedient. The word expedient means not all things owes benefit for me for now. He said, all things may be lawful, but not all, I will not be mastered by anything. It may be right for you. You may have argument and proof that yes, it is not sin. A child of God that has understanding of his authorized status will not argue whether something is sin or not. Your argument will be, is it beneficial to who I am, to how I want to operate? I said it here before, you cannot want to run 100 meters and we are Agbada. Is it a sin to we are Agbada to run 100 meters? Eh? Answer me now. Is it a sin if you want to run 100 meters to wear slippers? Eh? Or to wear boots? Military boots? But what will somebody that wants to run under meters wear? You wear, wear a tight vest, a pants, and a sneakers. Because that is what is expedient for their its engagement. Rise on your feet tonight as we begin to pray. I don't know how to lead you in prayer. Just open your mouth. If you want to pray in the Holy Ghost, just pray in the Holy Ghost. But you must realize what you have. You have a license to operate the power of God. And you need wisdom to operate this license. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. To be wise. To live as one that have understanding. Lord, to walk in the reality as one that knows that it carries a mandate and it carries a weight. I believe somebody should pray that Lord, help me not to misfire. Help me not to misfire. Help me not to misfire. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. You have authority. You have been licensed by God to use His force to cause things to happen. Say, so Lord, help me to enhance the potency of your authority. To enhance the potency of your power. Say so rejoice. For your name has been written. Your name has been written. Rejoice. I am so glad that Jesus lost me. Jesus loved me. Jesus lost me. I am so glad 